Today we're going to be looking at uh, Lenovo E585. It's, uh, it's discontinued now, but um, this one is in for repair, so we thought we'd have a look at it and see what some of the upgrade options are. Okay, so before we start, let's have a look inside it. Um, let's uh, just briefly talk about the problem that we've got. So with this one, uh, the issue is we are getting a um, critical process died message on boot up. It's a blue screen of death. So um, in our experience, the only best way to uh, resolve a blue screen of death is to give it a rebuild. But let's have a look at the device itself. So this one is a Ryzen 5. 2500U processor, so it's a quad-core CPU with a base clock of 2 gigahertz, bursting up to 3.6 gigahertz. It's got built-in AMD Radeon 8 Vega 8 graphics, and um, its display is a full HD uh, 19 by 20, 1920 by 1080 anti-glare IPS um, monitor or screen. Uh, Memory-wise, uh, this can take up to 32 gig of DDR4. It's got two DIMM slots um, running at 2400 MHz. Um, so we need to look on there. So let's have a look at the side of the device. Let's talk about the battery life first of all. So the battery uh, is supposed to be, when it's brand new, gives a reported 8 point, well, 8 hours of battery. Um, it's a 45 watt hour battery integrated and the external charger is a 65 watt charger with rapid charge technology. So looking at the side of the uh, device itself, so we can see the port here. This is for the power. Um, we've got an HDMI out. This is 1.4 HDMI. And the next two um, ports that we've got here are two USB 3.1 ports. And then to the right of that, as you can see here, if we can get this focused, uh, it's our combined headphone and speaker jack. On the other side, we've got um, our micro SD card reader. We've got another um, Type A USB port. This one is a USB Type uh, A 2 port. So that's a way that you can um, connect an external keyboard and mouse using a Wi Fi dongle. And lovely to see this one obviously has still got its RJ45 connection. And then to the right of that, we've got our Kensington lock port. This device comes with a TPM 2.0 chip, so it will run Windows 11. And the sound quality um, is supposed to be quite good. So the, it's got stereo speakers with Dolby Advanced Audio, Link Certified, Smart Audio Speaker Support. And um, in terms of the microphone, it's got a dual array noise cancelling microphone, which will be up by the top here. So we can see our microphones up the top here. And the webcam here is a 720p webcam, which is great. Dimensions wise, 14.53 inches wide, 9.92 inches um, width and or, or depth. And the height of the unit, nice and slim at 25.2 uh, millimeters or 0.78 inches. The weight. It's fairly, fairly weighty this one, it's uh, 2.1 kilos. So without further ado, let's get into the back of the machine and have a look at what the upgrade options are. Right, so here we are with the device itself. What you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver and we've got our selection of prizer tools. So on the back, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws to get into it. So let's get this uh, opened up. So these screws don't come all the way out, which is quite nice. These will just uh, unscrew and stay in place. So just unscrew them until you hear them go click. Front ones are quite tight. Right, let's have a look to see where we can start getting into the uh, unit itself. Okay, so it looks like at the front here is the uh, sensible place to get into it. It's already got a gap there. We're just going to run our prizer tool all the way down the sides. 
like that. And down this side as well. Don't be alarmed at the uh, snapping sound. It's not actually snapping any of the clips. It's just unclipping them. Okay, I'm going to lie the screen all the way down to get round the back corner. So we can turn that over and this should now ease off. We can get in round the back. There we go. Right, a bit tricky to get in there. So let's have a look. We've got a little bit of dust on the fan, so we'll give that a clean. And let's have a look at the upgrade options. So as you can see quite clearly what we've got in here. So under here, under here we've got our M.2 drive. So I think this is probably going to be maybe 256 gig or 512. Let's see if we can get in there and have a look. Okay, so that's the heat sink coming off. And then underneath here we've got So yeah, 256 gig we've got here. So that is upgradable, obviously, because it's an M.2 drive, so you can upgrade that to whatever capacity you want. Um, they do say on the specifications that it will go up to one terabyte. Um, however, you might be lucky and be able to stick a two terabyte M.2 drive in there. However, I always say to people that it's always best to stick to the... Uh, sticks to the recommendations. So if it's been recommended no more than a terabyte in there, then I tend to say to people, well, you know, just pop a, don't go any more than uh, what the manufacturer recommends. Otherwise you might end up um, not being able to use it and wasting your money. So there we go. So that's the M.2 drive back installed in place which is the OS. Right, so this is interesting. <laughs> this is actually just a dummy blanking plate. So um, uh, you remove this to pop your drive in. If you look here closely on the uh, connectors, there's no metal pin. So this is just a blanking plate. And this unit, this piece here will sit over the top of the um, drive once you connect it in. But they do give you the ribbon cable which is which is brilliant and I've never seen a device that actually puts a blanking plate in there with a connector on so we're just going to pop that back in to our drive holder like that. Connect the ribbon cable back up. So th that's quite impressive actually. I'm, I'm, I'm suitably very impressed with that. So We've got a blanking plate here. Um, we've got eight gig of memory here. Um, obviously it's a dual SODIMM slot, so um, you can change up to, you can put two 16 gig chips in here. This one is, um, as I mentioned, DDR4, it's eight gig running at 2400 megahertz. Um, but yes, you can take this one out and replace it with uh, two, 16 gig so dims and that will give you dual channel memory then okay so that's all there is to it basically so what we're now going to do is we're going to extract all the data from this and then we're going to factory reset it all right so now we've had a look at the internals of the device let's get the machine put back together so all we're going to do is pop the back panel back on uh, make sure it all clips in nice and tight and then screw get the screws done back up and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a fresh install of Windows 10 on here uh, get all the customer data back on and then it, return it to them so if you found that video useful give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel I just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one